All right. So I guess you could say welcome to the first ever um, Frankenstein Way drawing show. Um, let's see. Um, I'm doing this as a way to basically get a little bit more exposure to my webcomic and comic strip, print comic strip, Frankenstein Way. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the comic strip, uh, let me play you something that could potentially just save me the time and show you exactly who it is. All right, here we go. Um, let me switch real quick, sorry. Actually, let me explain Frankenstein way. Basically, it's the story of Count Dracula and Frankenstein's monster who are basically kicked out of Hollywood. All right, let me try this again. Their image lives in our nightmare. Their names strike fear in our hearts. They are the most famous monsters of legend. And today, they're being laid off. There you have it. A um, little bit of technical glitches, but we got it going. Um, for those wondering what the earpiece is, I'm not actually part of the Secret Service, but it's sort of my way to monitor the sound. Um, I had to keep the levels down, otherwise we're going to get a whole bunch of bunch of feedback. All right, let's begin. So I'm pretty much going to show you how I do Frankenstein Way. Um, an example of how I do it. Um, is I use a, a thing called a Cintiq, a, a Wacom Cintiq. Now a lot of people pronounce it as Wacom, but it's actually Wacom. Um, let's see if I can do this. How do I do it? And there you see me drawing straight onto the, the tablet. Um, it's a nice piece of machinery, but it's quite expensive and it takes a little bit of an investing but if you're serious about your craft nothing beats the Cintiq in my opinion for speed um, time saving for you know for projects and materials since you don't need paper ink you never run out of ink um, and you can see I draw straight to the computer and you know you get these things. This is basically a Sunday. It's a comic strip. One of the samples that I have. Here's another. You can see the characters there. And one more sample. Well, actually, that's a Sunday. Let me show you what a daily comic strip looks like. 
Uh, the difference is dailies run from Monday to Saturday, and Sundays run on Sunday. Uh, since I try to do one once a day, so seven a week, uh, you can see that speed is quite an essential tool. Um, so let me show you how I do it. Start off with the new. We're just going to run a sample of how I draw this. Hopefully, if this works out, I'll do later shows where I kind of go in depth into the tools that I use. Um, and I'll just kind of do an overview. So, for the Wacom, I use what's known as a uh, Wacom pen. Comes with, uh, it's basically a mouse, um, but it works just like a pen with an eraser. So, if you flip it, it actually erases comes with a felt tip pen for me, although for most people it's plastic. And when you draw on the surface, it doesn't feel like paper, but you do the best you can. Now, some may be wondering if I'm channeling Michael Jackson or something, but I'm actually not. Um, for most animators, they know what this is. This is basically just a regular cotton glove. I use it to draw on the surface of the Wacom. Um, Otherwise, your skin kind of gets kind of caught on the surface and kind of skids and jumps once in a while. This gives you more of a glidey type surface. There are more expensive gloves out there, going for like 30 bucks, 20 bucks. But I buy these for four dollars and I get like six gloves. See, save some money. All right, let's begin. Quickly, I'll show you some of the tools on the. Uh, program that I'm using which is Photoshop um, if you're Photoshop 4, 5, 6 doesn't matter they work just fine I'm actually using Photoshop 5.5 um, and the reason is I have things pre-programmed to the buttons of the Wacom that I use okay on the left side I'll show you pretty much the basic tools that I use you get your selector tool here or your move tool, I mean. This is your marquee, which helps you select. This is your lasso, another selection tool. This is the wand, another selection tool. Like so many selection tools. My brush, which I pretty much use to draw, as you can see. Um, an eraser that I use. Or I flip the pen, and you can see I just erase what I just drew. Um, certain things you can use in Photoshop that um, that you're going to use a lot. There's an example. I'll draw this. I didn't like that line, so I pressed the undo control buttons or keyboard keys, which is CTRL plus Z on the PC. I'm not actually sure what it is for the Mac. It could be the Apple Z. Or Command Z. Uh, Command is either Alt and Apple, I think, is Control, unless I flipped it. So I apologize to all the Mac users out there. Uh, that's just how it is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm working on the PC for those, uh, obviously. Um, okay, I'm going to choose the marquee tool. Um, the shape I, sh I chose is, is I'm using is a square. There's an elliptical one, and pretty much that's what I use. Once it's selected, you can shift the move tool, so then you can move whatever line you drew, or you can press the delete button and delete it. Now, if you didn't like that, press the Control Z, brings it right back. Okay, Control D is the deselect button. C T R L plus D. That means if I selected it, if I don't want it selected. Control D. Um, Select all, control A, delete. I'll get into these keyboard shortcuts in probably future episodes. Um, but right now, I just want to get down to drawing, which I'm sure you just are saying get to it already. Okay, here we go. I'm going to draw Frank. And like I said, this is Frank. And this is.
that is what he looks like when he's not in full vampire mode. And that's the character we're going to draw. Alright. I'm going to start off with... I'm going to show you first. We're going to do layers. It's here on the right side. The reason I have layers is basically I don't like messing up my drawings and I tend to mess up my drawings. But the one thing you don't want to do is draw everything on one plane like this for example. Okay, I drew that and I drew this. If I want to just erase this line that I didn't like, I had to erase the entire thing. But if I drew on this layer on the top what I wanted to draw, and maybe below it draw something that I didn't like, well I could just simply erase what I didn't like and it won't affect the top layer. This is the key to doing um, digital cartooning because uh, it saves you time and like a lot of headaches and it's gonna come in real handy when you start coloring because you want to color below the lines and I'll show that later alright we're gonna start off first with a um, what's known as a I guess you could say like an action line um, in short it's pretty much kinda of like it's Frank Spine line of action that's what it is I forgot the term uh, so it's basically determining his position um, we're just going to do a simple zero pose with something interesting with his hands zero pose is just the pose he like starts off with usually most zero poses are like standing um, the most boring poses you can come up with um, I'm going to do this is his collarbone, shoulders. You can see he already has um, a shape of what he's doing. Um, let's see. For most people, drawing heads is like circles. And uh, I drew the cross to give a representation of where the eyes and the nose, the ear line would be. Right? So that's the normal kind of head. Most people are, most people have round heads. Frank, on the other hand, has more of a cylindrical head. Kind of a cone almost. Alright. And then you draw the cross. And you draw the eye. And then you draw the nose and the mouth. This is where we start really defining characters. This is torso area is another cone, which kind of has like a little ice cream, like an upside down ice cream cone. So this is actually his pelvis area. I'm going to define his legs a little bit more. You see, I like to draw rough. Um, but that causes a lot of problems when you have a sheet of paper and you have to trace it over and over again to get a cleaner line. So I'm now using the tool known as the lasso. And this is one of the advantages, again, of digital cartooning. I do not like the positioning of the feet. So actually, I'm going to reverse that. I did not like the positioning of the torso so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move just that section and then I'm gonna rotate it let's see you do this on per paper without having to redraw alright and then actually I did myself a little bit of a favor and I just kind of lowered him now in general you can the other thing you can use with the Digital, with the Photoshop the tool you can use is a transform things like scale so you can uniformly scale them down or up to fit the page depending on what you need so I'm shrinking them down just a little bit so I can fit more on the page 
All right. Back to the brush. I'm going to do his hair, which I've been told looks pretty much like Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Drawing a sleeve. Drawing his hand. Let's kind of get him, give him a little inquisitive look where he's just not understanding his surroundings. And the thing about rough is you can change anything you want. You can see how I gave him the eyebrows. Now normally people would just leave, you know, just the eyes or whatever. But let me see if the eyes are the windows to the soul. So an example. Pretty boring face. But with a series of lines from the eyebrows, you can determine the mood of the character. So basically, now he's mad. He's kind of surprised. He's a little sad. And he's kind of wondering what's going on. And that's sort of what we're going to use for Frank. All right. I'm drawing the legs. I'm going to draw the pants. I like to draw big round clown feet on my characters. I just think it's funny. I'm going to define a little bit more. I like to use guidelines on a lot of my um, drawings. It really helps. But this is where the rough, again, comes in handy. Okay. Now, this is part of the cool thing about Photoshop. It gives you the options on the layer. And you see it up here where my cursor is. I'm going to take down its opacity. You can see it start to slowly disappear into the page. So for those experts out there in Photoshop, you know, you know, this is pretty much basic. But for those that have never tried drawing straight into Photoshop before, this is a great tool. From there, you can see it's pretty transparent. So then we're going to click on the top layer, and we're going to start drawing the character. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. The fine, the fine lines and the final lines. Now I like using the brush tool. I'm a big fan of uh, Bill Watterson, Calvin Hobbes, which people have told me my characters look like, or at least the style. The thing with the brush on the Cintiq, it's pressure sensitive. So if I draw light, it's light. If I start to draw heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier, then it gets thicker, which I like to do for my characters. I like to give them a variety of lines. Some people like to use pens. I like to use brush. All right. Draw the eyes. See, Frank's a little bit worried. Maybe he doesn't know what this drawing is going. <laughs> All right. See, I draw pretty fast, and I find that Cintiq really accommodates that because when I draw fast, I draw rough, and I make a lot of mistakes. You can clean up those mistakes on your final lines. I don't know why, but I gave Frank sneakers. Go figure. A vampire with sneakers. Alright. Some lines to define more things. Um, I kind of gave him a shirt design, which many people have said looks like Charlie Brown's. And maybe it's an homage, who knows. I just sort of ended up that way.
Okay, we have the lines done. To check it, you go here on your uh, layer that you drew the rough on. You turn it off and on with this little eye symbol. And then maybe make some corrections here and there, clean up, and you have fright. Now, if you want to do anything else to clean up, go ahead. I sometimes will throw in just little fine lines to give it just a little bit more. Now we go to the fun part. Well, actually, it's all fun, but we go to the coloring stage. I will color it on the layer below. Reason being, same reason as you do tracing, I'm drawing on different layers. See? I draw under I drew underneath, but the top layer will be uh, Call it untouched if I decide to erase the color. If they're on the same layer, then I'd have to start again because if I erase the color, the lines will also disappear. Here, just an example. There. You notice if I erase it now, both line and color are gone. Let me undo that. All right. Two ways I color one is fill. The other is just brushing it in. You saw me brushing it in just there. I'll give you an example of that. Just take your brush and just go in. Or you use what's known as the wand to go to the layer with the lines, select the area you want colored, and fill it. And you make sure you fill it on the layer below. Now, I didn't want the lines in between on the shoulders here to be colored. The reason it got colored is because of the fact that the lines aren't connected. They're not closed. To do that, let me show you what happens. See, it selects it. Now, if I undo the selection, close the black lines. Now if I use the wand again, it won't be touched. Fill it, paint it, boom. Now if you want to do this quick, you use fill. But it gets tedious sometimes because you got to make sure that your lines are always closed. So when it's not, switch the brush, clean out the rest. Right. You switch color this area here, color the shoes, which is blue. Then the skin color is pale, but fill it. Color the diamonds, kind of create a little argyle shape. And all the little shortcuts that you see that I'm doing, I will do at another date. Okay, now I'm going to do the hair. We'll select hair. Let's fill it. It's all black. All right. There. Shaping up. Pretty well. Color here. Color there. Kill on coloring all the little spots you missed. And normally I draw a background on the strip, but sometimes I just like to fill it with a color, like a big blotch of something. So here.
fill it. Now, you see why I create a little color behind Frank. Most people use gray, but I actually work in white first. But the reason I do this is, as you can see, there are areas that are missed. And those need to be closed or painted, which is just white. All right. Bam. No areas are missed here. You see I'm kind of increasing and lowering the size of the brush as I need. Sometimes you need a big one, sometimes you need a tiny one. So a drawing like this would take me well, pretty much, I don't know, maybe an hour from start to finish. But you see, it's pretty much done. You know it's done because I sign it. All right, that's Frank. So I hope you guys liked this, um, I guess to say, the first show. just wanted to give you a kind of introduction to the characters. But I'm hoping to do more down the line and probably get into more um, teaching on uh, cartooning as I do it. So um, if you have any questions for me, maybe give me some comments on how the show went, uh, how to do, uh, or at least give us some show suggestions, please feel free. This is the email that you can reach us on. That's fnscomic at gmail.com. You can also follow us on we're on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We also have Frankensteinway.com and GoComics.com. For those who are wondering, this is a real, real deal for me. I'm uh, doing some promotion for these characters. Um, this is one of their books that we came out with. It was funded actually by Kickstarter. And for those who helped out, thank you very much. It's pretty much a book, which is a year's worth of comic strips. Uh, if you want any more information on the book, send us uh, an email. And for those who are wondering, we are available on the iPad as well. Just go to the iBookstore and then do a search for Frankenstein Way. And basically, let's see how it loads. There you go digital version of our book all right i hope you guys at least had a pretty good introduction to the strip we have plans to do a cartoon in the future a full-fledged animated cartoon but you know try to get them a little bit more exposure and hopefully how about some people who are wondering how to get into this business and how to do what we do so I guess until next time, I hope you had a good time at least today, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you very much for coming. Bye.